one but himself. Mm. <laughs> Searched all over. I call that out myself. I will go. serve you in spirit and in truth. Thank you again for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The, uh, the thought that our brother James came by yesterday, I, I think I texted you, James. And uh, he, he doesn't get a chance to come here like he used to because of his job. And uh, we had a very interesting conversation. And uh, I want to share this with you. Uh, when God moves you mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone, you remember I said your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. If you, if the Spirit has a problem moving you out of your comfort zone, that is saying that God is moving in you to, 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 to do something <coughs> with that zone you're in. Whenever you move one place to another, it's gonna, it's gonna, you're going you're gonna to feel the experience of that moving. Uh, I've seen my uh, granddaughters and my daughter, how as they get older, more challenges come and sometimes you don't know how to deal with those challenges when they come. And what I'm saying is Christ enables us to move from our comfort zone because he is our comfort. I'm coming back here because I feel comfortable. But suppose Christ wants you here and you don't want to leave your comfort zone. But Christ is our comfort. Amen. Therefore, we can move on into those areas that Christ has designed for us. For shaping, for molding, Amen. for imaging. Amen. All that has to do with him breaking us away Amen. from those areas we find so comfortable yes. that he can shape us into the image of his dear son. Uh, the foundation, uh, we looked at the book of uh, Corinthians. Thank you, Pagan. <coughs> The foundation, uh, let's do this. Here, here is the foundation right here. This is the foundation. But Christ said, be careful what you put. Uh, what you build on the foundation. We know there's only one foundation. It is a lot of things. Right, and that is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. That is where we all stand. Paul said, according to the great.
grace of God, he, verse 10 of chapter 3 of, of Corinthians, give me a wise master builder. Yeah. I, ha I have laid the, what, the foundation and others build upon them. Mm -hmm. But let him take heed how he builds upon what? Yeah. The foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we alluded to some of that this morning. We talked about the celebrities joining uh, Christians' organizations, supposedly Christians' organizations. Uh, and what is the purpose? Mm -hmm. um, the purpose and your intentions will be dealt with at the judgment seat of Christ. You know? You see what I'm saying? Your intentions has a lot to do, I'm thinking foremost, in why you're doing what you do. And I think this Scripture, God's word is sharpened to it, so even in the intents of the heart. Yeah. <laughs> so intentions and the purpose and the motive why you do something is so 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 grand in this sense. Um, Christ, God spoke of the uh, the foundational back in the book of Genesis. He said, "Where uh, uh, he will bring." Serpent, seed, mm -hmm. you will be abused the hill, but he will crush your head. Mm -hmm. He was talking about that foundation being laid there. Mm -hmm. He already spoke of it there. Mm -hmm. Go to the book of Genesis very right quick. Chapter 3, I believe it is. Yeah. And verse 316. Amen. How Jesus, by God, laid the uh, spoke of the foundation, but the, actually the foundation had been laid before the beginning of the world. He says, verse 14 says, And Jehovah said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than all the animals of the field. Upon your stomach, Shall you go, will go, and thus you will, will eat. And at the, all the days of your life. This is the first Messianic prophecy spoken of about the rock, the foundation that was going to come. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And he will bruise you on the head but you shall bruise his heel. <clears throat> now again, in the book of Rome, Romans chapter 1, he's still talking about this, this foundation. Chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3, I believe it is. I, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called an apostle, a sent one, separated unto the gospel of God, the good news of God, which he promised beforehand, beforehand, even in the book of Genesis and, and the book of Isaiah, in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, the seed of David according to the what? Flesh. The flesh. And designated to be the Son of God according to the spirit of holiness out of the resurrection of the dead. Then you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're talking about the foundation that has been laid that the believer <coughs> stands on. That the believer stands on. Chapter 15, verses 1 through 6, I believe it is. The foundation yes. by which the believer 
stands on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's so unique about this is that there's only one foundation that God has placed his hand of approval on concerning the foundation where every believer is standing. Now, just because you are a believer, I mean, because you're a believer, you're standing on this foundation. This is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, there is work to be done through the Holy Spirit in the believer to build on this foundation. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now, mm -hmm. let's get this straight first. The, the key jewel here is the foundation. It is. All right now. Mm -hmm. All right. No one can thwart the foundation. Well, There's only one. Mm -hmm. But Paul says, be careful how you build on the foundation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. This, this building is on the foundation. Yes, sir. Now he says, whatever you build on that foundation, be very careful. Come on, Harvey. You see what I'm saying? Now, every believer who is then born again in the body of Christ is on the foundation. No doubt. All right, now. You own the foundation. You've been born again. You own the foundation because it says this. Chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now I make known unto you, brothers, mm -hmm. the gospel. It is. Yes, sir. Which I announced to you, which also you receive, in which you also stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The gospel. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You're here. Yeah, you know. Here. That's you own that. Mm -hmm. Then it says, uh, verse 2, through which you also been, as I was about, been saved. Mm -hmm. You own this, mm -hmm. and you've been saved mm -hmm. to go into uh, eternity, into the millennial period uh, with Christ. If, if, mm -hmm. it's not that everybody's going. Mm -hmm. And this if, there's a possibility you may not go into be saved in the sense of your soul. You are born again. You own the foundation. You see what I'm saying? But when God began to save you, it's what you build on the foundation. You, you, can you see that? Because you're saved by the rock-solid message that Jesus died for your sins and rose again on the third day. That's how you're born again. Born again has nothing to do with working out your soul salvation. That, that has to do with you. Yes. With your determination to follow God and let him work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. Now he goes on to say here, I announce to you the gospel which, which you are, unless you have what? Believe in vain. Unless you believe for no, it's no value to you. If you really believe, it's a value to you. Mm -hmm. You see? Some people believe what a, a head belief. Mm -hmm. They believe and they go on about their whole entire life doing things out of their own mind and on their own head. Uh, for I deliver unto you, he said, first of all, I deliver unto you that which also I receive that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Jesus paid it all according to the scriptures. Now, the question is, how is the foundation laid? Because Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Right? He died for our sins according to the scriptures. That not only mean my sins, but your sins. He died for the whole world according to the scriptures. That's the foundation. Then it says here, and that he was buried, and he he been he been risen on the third day of what? According to the scriptures. What is written? What is written? And there are there may be some mis.
calculation because there's a number of individual number of cults out here that said, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead, but he didn't rise bodily. Mm -hmm. He did get out of the grave with a body. Yes, wow. And some say raised spiritually. Mm -hmm. None of that's true. Mm -hmm. Jesus raised from the dead bodily. Yes. Look here, look here. Mm -hmm. And he and, and he appeared unto Cephas, it is. then the other twelve. Yes. So he had to have a body mm -hmm. to maneuver around in. Amen. Then he appeared to over 500 brothers at once time, to whom the majority remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. He didn't say they were dead. He said believers go to sleep. Hallelujah. Thank you. Where? In Christ. Thank you, Lord. Unbelievers die. Unbelievers are dead from the first time. They die physically. Uh, you're already dead spiritually, but you die physically dead as you get older and some of the deeds take you out of the world. So you've been died, you die, you're dead, and that's that respect. He says, uh, he also appeared to uh to James, and least of all, he appeared to me. Where did that happen? On to the masculine road. And it were one born prematurely because I persecuted the church of Almighty God. Now what I, what I want to do here was just lay the foundation, to lay the foundation that Jesus' death and your salvation depends on his death, his burial, and resurrection. If he just died, he would still been the great one with, with, with nothing. But he had to raise from the dead to show that God was satisfied with that sin debt that he had paid. Now, the key here is this. <coughs> what do we put on the foundation? I think it's key. Yes, right. Yeah, we hit some of that this morning. And some of you, um, just think about this. He said wood, hay, and stubble, which has to do with things that's not consistent with. Yeah, they're burnt. Yeah. On the on the foundation, uh, silver, uh, gold, silver, and precious stones is what represent Christ mm -hmm. and work done in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right now, the th the key here is for me is that if I'm on this foundation and if I'm being taught properly, I want to find out exactly what's appropriate for this foundation right. as opposed to what is not appropriate. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And, look, listen, and that is for the elders and overseers to make sure that you have this information. Yes, now, it doesn't mean that you're going to, going to go along with it, mm -hmm. but at least it ought to be exposed, yes, expressed, yes, exposed yes, to you. Yes, because uh, we are going to have to answer to God for everything that we taught you. Mm -hmm. yes. No doubt. Yes, no doubt about it. And so we have to guard what we say out of our mouths mm -hmm. as far as teaching. Mm -hmm. yes. We say things uh, jokingly sometimes, but mm -hmm. hopefully that's taken in the sense that it was given. Yes. But in talking about Christ here, yes, we have to speak to him, speak to you about things that you put on the foundation yes. that's really his and not come out of the world. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, I, I said intentions. Glory. Uh, that's a movie we watched years ago. It calls uh, "Good Intentions Don't Feed the Bulldog." <laughs> so it's, it, you may have good intentions. Uh, we, see if you're here, you're believing, you're doing something here. No doubt. You're building something here. Amen. You're putting something on the foundation. Is what you're putting on the foundation? Does it meet the requirements of God? That's the key. Well, That's the key. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm thinking that many times this ought to be taught to believers that just come in. No doubt. Right? If, if you're on the foundation here, but what you build on the foundation will be trying to fire. No matter what your intentions were, the fire will reveal exactly what your intentions were. And so that's why we have to examine ourselves very closely yes. at what we are building on the foundation. Mm -hmm. And you, the best way to deal with that is to allow the Spirit it is. Mm -hmm. to work and build on the foundation those things that are Christ. It is. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If your mind mm -hmm. is running things, 
you're going to put stuff on this foundation yes, that God has nothing to do with yes, and God sir. has to judge it yeah. because it's on the foundation. Yeah, it is. Am I right here? Yes, yeah. sir. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit tells you and moves you in areas where you take the things of Christ and build on the on the foundation. So you can be saved, no doubt. but all your mess can actually burn up yes, in the judgment seat. Yeah. Gracious, true. All your niceness yes. means nothing <laughs> if it wasn't niceness in the Holy Spirit. All your kindness, all your tithes and offerings yes, mean sir. nothing yes, unless they were given in the Spirit. Yes, sir. The, all that stuff that's not Christ is going to burn at the judgment seat of Christ. But you shall be saved at, at by the fire because you were on the foundation. But all your stuff burns up. Yes, sir. So if you want a reward, you have to uh, be uh, living in the Spirit to produce those things of, 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 that you put on the oil. Now listen, the, the thought I have here, look back at uh, verse... Uh, Yeah, for, uh, I'm sorry. Back in the First Corinthians chapter, <coughs> no, chapter three. Mm -hmm. We'll look at something else. Okay. See now, verse uh, verse eleven and twelve, and we went through that. But you have to see this. Yeah. For another foundation is able to lay. For, 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 uh, for another foundation, no one is able to lay. Mm -hmm. Now, people do have foundations. Mm -hmm. So people do lay other foundations. But what's, what sense is Paul is talking about here? <coughs> the foundation of, of Christ. Mm -hmm. Where you might be saved mm -hmm. simply by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, us laying foundation, you can be saved by faith plus something. Mm -hmm. You got to come in and join this and join that and do this and do that. But this is totally what Paul is saying. He is totally against a person saying, you got to trust Jesus and do this. Yeah. You got to trust Jesus and do this. Mm -hmm. You got to call him John, John Jesus, but you got to do this. No, it's not that. Mm -hmm. You're standing there because you're trusting in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Hallelujah. That's the only reason you're there. Mm -hmm. You're not there because you look good or you sound good. Or you got a good education. Or you got a piece of money somewhere. You're there because you trust Christ as your personal Savior. That's why you're there. Thank you, Lord. Glory. But you begin to build on the foundation once you enter into this priesthood of a new creature. Yes, sir. If any man be in Christ, you stand on the foundation. You're in Christ. Be careful how you build on this foundation. Warning. Yes, yes, Absolutely. Red flag going up. Hallelujah. Yes. Everything we do, we ought to question it to see whether or not it is of the Spirit or not. Yes, sir. And that had nothing to do with our, our doing something good. If you're going to do something good, make sure it's not out of our heart and out of the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Don't just be kind because it's convenient to be kind. And you you gonna you gonna look good and sound good to somebody else. No, it's not about that. It's about you being kind and considering every situation. Has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with that one that represent you, you represent. And the other one here was uh, if anyone builds on that foul silver gold and precious stone, he himself shall receive a reward. Now, the reward, remember. You're not there because God is condemning you because you got salvation. No. You're there because you are saved. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Pure in that. Mm -hmm. look, look again. For, for the work of each <coughs> will become manifested. For the day shall declare it because it is revealed by fire. And fire is, itself shall prove each man's work of what sort it is. His work. Is it, it, yeah, the work that you've done in the body of Christ. What you carry out in the spirit will be silver, gold, silver, and precious stone. What you did in the flesh 
will be wood, hay, and stubble. Uh -oh. That's right, I think I'm doing the right thing. But you ain't checked with nobody. But you just doing stuff because it feels good and, it, and your mind is told it it's all right. You see what I'm saying? Your mind don't dictate to you Christ. The Spirit dictates to you through your Spirit to your mind how to do whatever it is that, that, that God's uh, plan for you to do. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you. If any man works, you, you're not there because God judged you because you're saved. No, you're not. saved because Jesus paid it all. Yes, he paid for your salvation in the Spirit. He paid every dime, everything. You're not lost, you're saved. But the work that you do will be determined, your reward to receive at the judgment seat of Christ. If I'm uh, in a race, if this is Paul, I'm put it there. And you run along and you get to the end of the line down there, and you are, you've got to run lawfully. You can't make a shortcut get to the end. <laughs> See, you know, when you run the race, there are rules set, you know. There, there are rules set, and there are uh, uh, regulations placed on the run. As to how you rush and run this race. Mm -hmm. And if you run the race, then for Christ there are laws and rules, not, not laws, but regulations that Spirit helps you to determine when to move, when not to move. Uh, there's a commercial, I think I said to you, uh, the uh, tattoo artist. Yeah. You seen that? Yeah. Where the tattoo artist is sitting in the chair, and this, this rookie, he said, he, he, first time he ever seen a tattoo, he said, but he read a little something about it, but he don't know nothing about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said, go tell the tattoo artist how to, how to do the tattoo. Mm -hmm. The tattoo's are, like, wait a minute, stay in your lane, bro. <laughs> and the, the, the sense of, I'm speaking of is that there is a lane for us. Right. It is following Christ. That's right? That's right. That's right. But look at this. Here is Christ, and here are you. Mm -hmm. Right? Christ is leading, but we're over here. <laughs> we, 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 we're doing our own thing. You, you see what that? And we're praying and, and asking God to help us. And he, he I don't think sometimes you just turn a deaf ear because no, it's not real. The prayer is not genuine. And so Christ is moving along, and we're over here. If you're going to follow him, Get in the, in, the, in the right lane with him. He sets the pace for the believer. And the course. Yes, and the course. Remember Paul said, I'll finish my course. So every believer has a lane that's personally his that Christ has set for him. But he is the one that sets the pace. He is the one that you lead, you're led by the Spirit. You have to be led by the Spirit because if, you, if you're led by yourself, you're out here. Wobbling around, and sometimes you even up here. So you get to the judgment seat of Christ. All this stuff is going to come up, and get back to intention and motive. Don't hold. If your intentions and motives are not in agreement with the Holy Spirit, uh -oh. uh, you're going to lose out here at the judgment seat. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, if you do something, if you look at person at yourself, look deep inside and find out what is my motive, what, what is my intent here, what is my goal. Glory. When you're doing something, now pe people set goals for you, but you better run them by Christ before you venture out on the, on the trail. Now you can set short term goals. But Christ has to be that ultimate goal you're, you're trying to get to. Amen. I want to pay my, pay my bills off. So you work with that short-term goal in mind to get your bill paid. But you don't, you don't lose sight of who you're following. Because he don't want you to get into something that's not him. Come on, Harvey. Because if you're getting into something not him trying to do what you think is right, all that's going to come up here to yeah. give me see the price. Your intent has a lot to do with what you do and your motive. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What 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 are my intentions here? 
Uh, go with me to the book of Philippians, then we'll close. Mm -hmm. Chapter, I think it's a chapter. Okay, chapter one. see this. This is so important. Now, 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 now God's word was being preached here in Philippi. That's right. But the intentions, Paul was saying, <laughs> after the foundation were laid, your intentions. Uh, we were looking yesterday, uh, uh, thank God for this young man. The foundation has been laid. The devil in hell can't touch this. Can't touch it. No. And, and once you hear the gospel and receive it, you are standing on the foundation. Right? Once you become a child of God and stand on the foundation, the devil can't take that away from just yours. Because Christ gave it and gave it to you. Right? Now, Paul says, some was preaching because of intention. That's right. Mm -hmm. Some were jealous. Yeah. But I thank God That's right. that the gospel was being preached. The gospel still was yeah. being preached. Yeah. Now, 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 I had a problem with that mm -hmm. for a while. That's right. But then I said, well, what in the world is Paul talking about here? If he says, some preach it because they want to hurt me, and some people preach it for other reasons, then why am I so happy that the gospel is being preached? You have to sing, get, this, get, get single minded here and get back to the gospel. That's right. The gospel had nothing to do with their intentions mm -hmm. All right, now. or their motives. Oh, okay. All right. you, 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 you are standing on the fact that you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose yeah. from the dead on the third day according to the scripture. Yeah. That's what you hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to hear to get here. Mm -hmm. That's it. But after you get there, your intentions and motives has a lot to do with your reward. There it is. There it is. There it is. There are many, many believers yes, who are standing behind pulpits who reward is going to burn at the judgment seat of Christ. But there are many believers who are sitting in these pews are saved because they're on the foundation. That's right. That's right. I don't want to, I want to be one who's building on the foundation. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's see what Paul says Verse 15. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dave. Yep. I'm a little excited this morning. Glory. Because Jesus did pay it all. Yeah. And we, we ought to let the world know it too. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Philippians 1 15. Some, some, uh, Philippians 1 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some preach Christ because of envy. Mm -hmm. And strength. Mm -hmm. They just don't like me. Mm -hmm. They just don't like me. And you, you have ministers that don't like other ministers. Mm -hmm. But they still preach what? The foundation. That's right. Yeah. Not bread and resurrection. That's true. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And members get saved, mm -hmm. but they don't like some other preacher. Yeah. Their intentions are wrong, mm -hmm. and their motives are wrong. The thing is here, that when they get a judgment seat of Christ, they are saved, mm -hmm. get us by fire, but everything they did in the flesh will burn up. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, 15. Yes, Some because of, of goodwill. There were two. Two intentions, two motives here. Right? Can you see them? Mm -hmm. What are the first? He said, every strike was one motive, one intention. And some also because of goodwill. They really wanted That's me to right. be successful. That's right. You see? Mm -hmm. well, anytime you're telling the truth, and that truth comes against something that's been propagated, but it's not the truth, you're going to get into this. Mm -hmm. In your own household, you get into this. In your own neighborhood, you get into this. But you don't count them as enemies because you want to minister them the things of Christ. Right? Don't ever hate anybody. Paul didn't hate these boys, these brothers, because they did what they did. Because he knew the judgment seat of Christ 
Christ was going to deal with all that. His main purpose was to keep his head level, stay in the right lane, and do what God had called him to do. And, but at the same time, he was rejoicing because the gospel was being preached. And uh, that scripture Elder Miles read this morning, uh, uh, get away from all appearance of evil. So if there's someone you know that is preaching, but their intentions are something else, you should get away from that. It, your intention could be money. You don't preach the gospel because that's solid. You can't mess with that. Can't you? You can't mess with that. That's solid. That's, that's, that's a rock. That you can't, I'm standing on a rock right here. That's it. But as I get on here, what are my intentions? As far as my work is concerned. Or what I'm going to do. And I'm still listening to this instructor here. This deacon, this uh, elder, this pastor, this overseer, uh, this bishop, or whoever he is. I'm listening to him. I'm standing here. But his, his intentions are to have me look somewhere else other than the, than the Spirit of Christ. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about. It's real simple. But it takes time to really digest that and become reality to you. All right? He said, I, But others announce Christ out of selfish ambition, not, not purely thinking, and raise up affliction in my own. Try to hurt me. What then? Look at Paul said, what then? Mm. They, they, this crazy boy that had doing this, he didn't say, I'm sure it is how. He said, what then? I, I don't care. I don't care about that mess. He said, own that in every way, whether in pretense or thankfulness or truthfulness, Christ is announced, and this I rejoice in. I will rejoice. That's right. Because the gospel is being preached. That's right. No matter what that church is on. Your intentions stay pure. You stay with Jesus. You plant silver, gold, silver, and precious stone. Let them guys throw all the dirt and rocks and the mess and the that stuff out. And when they get a judgment seat, their, their mess will burn, but they will save it at my fire. Some folks smell like this come out of a burning house. You see what I'm saying? And what this does for me is help me to stop criticizing. Others. Amen. And stay with Jesus. That's right. Because Paul didn't criticize you. He said, well, he said, I know they're doing it in pretense and yep. selfish and envy. I know that, but I thank God that the gospel is being preached. Yep. And some people say, well, it, it came from an unclean vessel. And the, and the, and the, and the, uh, and the person that was preaching uh, was trying to into something else. Yeah, oh, you hear all that. And so if you if you just if you just there, you will be hung up on them and that. What Christ does for me and for Paul here is it tend to they can see it, but they don't they don't address it. They just stay with the gospel. You see? You can't fight all these these, these, these people out here. You, you can't point out everything they do wrong. I mean it, it's good to see it. But the most important thing is that you stay with the gospel. You stay in the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you into where you should go. And stay, uh, what's that word? Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. It's finding what your lane is and how you to operate in your lane really helps a lot. Some believers are just floating around just all over here, all around. And, and they ain't got a good look at this one. Christ here. Oh, I'm saved. True. But are you following? Or are you having to be Lord over your life? Yeah. One passage scripture that really are, not passage scripture, but a word that stuck with me was redemption. And redemption actually, me don't actually mean say again? Yes, but I'm saying the word redemption is set. To, to, walk, to, walk, walk. to buy back. To buy back. To the state. And when you buy it back, because it's in heart, you buy it back. The possession is who? The one that bought it back. Right, Jay? So Christ bought you. He bought you 
You are His. And so actually, you and an obligation to no other because no other bought you. Now there are plenty of things that they can buy you, buy your loyalty, buy your buy your, your, your faithfulness, which is which is has nothing to do with with Christ. That's that stuff that will burn and burn up. <coughs> Paul said uh, he didn't volunteer to become a believer. And I really don't think anybody, when you look at it, none of us volunteered to become to follow Christ. If you did, you better check on your new birth. Earl, did you run around trying to find Jesus to follow? No. Somewhere, God calls you. He drew you. He wooed you. He wooed you. He called you. Hallelujah. He called you. Thank you, Lord. He called you. Thank you, I didn't volunteer to be a Christian. He, he fixed things up so I could call on his name. Absolutely. He called you. The world had had you wrapped up, blown up, triple up, out of your mind, crazy. But God renewed around and called you from all of the darkness into his heart. Because you didn't even know him. You only knew him as he called you. Yes, sir. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Hallelujah. You see how good that is? So let's remember that people in these places where um, man is leading and guiding and this and that, uh, they're saved. That's no doubt. If they, if, they, if they ever trust in Christ, they're saved. But you make sure that you don't get involved with any of that stuff. Because, mm -hmm. it, again, we say that. But get away from all, all appearances. Mm -hmm. That thing that's not Christ. Same from evil. Yeah, I sing from evil. Praise the Lord. Yes, so I hope that helped us. It helped, helped me a lot. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it really did take a lot of burden off me. Because somebody's doing something wrong, and Ellie hit this morning, doesn't mean that he's not a child of God. Amen. Amen. I got three brothers, and it, my dad was named Newman Harvey. Every one of us was different from him. And I went to Newport News, and there I lost my mind. My mind was already messed up. I went there, and I just lost it. Bright light, big city. I lost my mind. And one of my friends saw me one night coming down the street, drunk as ten bushels of drunks, staggering. Jesus. Yes, I was. I'm about, yeah. eight, about 19 years old. Oh, Amen. Drunk, had my money in my hand and just dropping it all on the street. And he came along, picked up, and gave it back to me. Mercy. Then he got home and told my mama mm. and my daddy. See, I saw Willie. Mercy. He was walking down the street like a drunk man. I was drunk. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, the point I'm making is that just because you come from a a family. Come on, uh, you don't have to act like no family acts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. I was in the devil's yeah. 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 He had a headlock on me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I didn't I didn't know he had a headlock. Yeah. I didn't even kick. Come on, I didn't know it. I, I didn't even throw my hand up and say, I time out was I was just in that headlock and I was enjoying the ride of the headlock. But Jesus wooed and called me. Call me. Get out of that. I'll take you and set you free, will it? And he did. The thing is, remember, you're saved once you receive Christ your presence. Then your walk in Christ plays a lot of role in the Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, hope that that helped. Any, any questions? Any closing remarks?